learned already that names don't constitute knowledge. It's the knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzclonan experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell him what you're talking about. But the basic principle of knowing about something rather than just knowing its name is something that you stuck to, is it? Yes, of course. It's, well, you have to learn. These are kind of disciplines in the field of science that you have to learn. That to know when you know and when you don't know and what it is you know and what it is you don't know. And it's, uh, you've got to be very careful not to confuse yourself. Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro and Patreon.com slash BKC. All right, so uh, I've been giving away some nice freebies um, over Twitter, over Facebook, uh, here on TradingView. Um, and I started basically somewhere in here, okay? I said that the, the biggest risk to this economy is this uh, this channel now. It's now it's a channel, okay? But before it was a nice one, two, three up. We were looking for the next move down to occur. So let's kind of recap what happened here. First of all, we had what I call uh, elliptic, okay? Something that kind of like it looks like elliptic and then pops. Right? That, that's what happens. So we got the limp dick, then we got the one, two, three up, all right? And then usually what happens is when you when you create a structure like this, the next move is to the downside, right? So you'll get a one, two, three up, and then it'll form a structure, okay? And then you get the hook. This was kind of, you know, it was on the borderline kind of a hook, and I thought that this would start to uh, fall apart. Didn't happen, didn't happen. It instead it made another high and then it started to correct and then we had this area where it did not test it didn't test it all the way to the top of the trend line and then we kind of move the trend line so you can see a little bit clearer how close it came all right oops not too much all right let me kind of zoom in here so you can see what i'm talking about see that didn't quite touch it and i know it looks stupid and insignificant but that really says a lot Okay, if you know how to read charts, bare knuckle charts, or uh, naked charts, or you just look at the price action uh, like this, you, and you know how to read it, you know that's significant. Okay, we didn't get the correction um, that I was looking for, a much deeper one. Instead, we got a sideways correction, and the sideways correction formed another one, two, three uh, structure, which is a pause. Okay, and then I said, look for one more up. Then we got the one more up, and then we got this rising wedge. Let me fix that as well. Here, when these fucking lines move, okay. And I said that there's one more up coming, and sure enough, we got the one more up. All right, but we're still within this channel in here. All right, um, it's starting to pause within this bigger structure. Let me kind of zoom out a little bit because I think it's important for you guys to see this there we go so um, within the context of this structure in here where you have the one two three that's fully formed right now you're getting the the four up okay this can break out or it can reverse right here now and start going down because when you see a structure point one way usually what happens is the opposite and that's why it always fools people because it does one two three it deeks them left and right they get all fucking confused they don't know what the hell they're looking at they they miss this whole entire pattern right and then it starts coming down why do they miss this whole entire pattern? Because people don't know how to read charts anymore. They just were rely on bots and news events and RSIs and MACDs and candlesticks and all this stupid shit that makes nobody any money. But it's very popular. They sell a lot of books. It's a billion dollar fucking industry of selling bullshit to people. Whatever. Go out, do your support and resistance and all that nonsense. 
it doesn't work. So um, let's zoom in back again. So we got the one more up, came up here. It's up against this longer term resistance area. Once again, we are going sideways, All right? This is, uh, can be considered a high base. This is not a full structure yet. So I'm just telling you what's basically happening in here. Okay, it's not confirmed yet, but this is a high base where it just kind of lingers up here, uh, consolidates, eventually it's gonna form some kind of a structure. And if we are to go into euphoria land, uh, this is going to break out, break this, the, this whole entire structure, and off we go. Okay. And so, what is Euphoria Land? Euphoria Land is 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 a time in the in the cycle where everybody just fucking says, you know, I'm not shorting this thing anymore. I'm done. <laughs> I'm I'm done. There's there's no there's no sellers left. There's no shorts left. Everybody's just fucking wiped the fuck out. Fundamentals don't matter. Nothing fucking matters. Just buy and that's it. And here is the problem that we've had since July, Fed rate cuts, trillion dollar deficits. Uh, this is a mid-cycle rate adjustment. Remember that one, right? Well, that's not the case anymore. Um, we, we've had four rate cuts and, you know, uh, trillion dollar deficits, uh, we've had repos, $200 billion, we, QE again, that's not QE again. So, you know, tweet after tweet from the Communist Party of China to Trump, to the ECB, to the Fed, and this guy, and that, everybody's trying to pump the market up. And that's okay. <laughs> you can't fight that shit, you know. I was short, I was short, I was making money, I went long in here very nicely, okay, my bias was bearish, but when you're seeing day after day after day after day, we're going we're gonna to increase uh, uh, the repo thing, we're going to lower interest rates, we're going to, you know, um, run QE, uh, we're going to increase QE, we're going to, uh, uh, every fucking day, it's, it's comical. It's comical because the earnings are not increasing. Okay, they're not they're not increasing. So what's happening when prices go up and earnings are not increasing? Well, you end up in multiple expansion. Uh, and when you start getting into that multiple expansion phase and you have nobody shorting the market because they can't, because every time they do, they get fucking burned by some tweet. Then you end up in euphoria land. All right. So. Um, if this breaks to the upside, you know, everybody and their mom are just going to start buying and it'll go up and up and up and up and up and up. And then it's going to, you know, some point exhaust itself. And then it's going to come down and down and down and down and down. And that's the way it's going to be. That's what it appears to be. Is it clear yet? No, it's not. It's not written in stone. What we need to do at this point this is going to have to, this channel is going to have to correct at some point. I don't know when. Um, again, as I said, and the tweets, if you guys follow me and I, you know, I post it on my Facebook and so on. So long as we remain within this channel, you want to be looking for upside. All right. That's what you want to be doing. You want to be looking for upside until it breaks. Once it breaks, then, you know, all, all bets are off. But even if it breaks, what you want to see is that it holds this previous high right here. All right. You want it to hold this previous high and you want it to start hooking back up because then you're going to get into one, two, three, and then off we go. All right. Doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm telling you what you want to see. You want to see it hold the previous high. If it doesn't hold the previous high, it starts falling apart then this whole entire structure is in jeopardy, all right? And then, then things can get ugly very fast because the law of re diminishing returns of, you know, oh, yeah, we have uh, good things happening with China. We're having a good deal. We have a Brexit. We have a Dixit. We have a Contexit. Uh, all, all this stuff eventually, 
you know, it's a law of diminishing returns. People are going to be like, you know what, fuck this. I don't give a shit. You know, uh, so if this starts to break and it comes below the previous high, then this whole structure is in jeopardy. And if it, this starts to fall apart, first target is always down here. Okay. It doesn't, it's not going to happen tomorrow, next week, but, you know, we're in a key area right now. We're in a key area. And again, so long as we remain within this channel, we look for upside. Uh, so that's basically it. All right. Um, the risk to the market remains this channel. To the economy, I should say, not the market. The risk to the economy remains this channel. Um, if it continues to go euphoric, let it, please. <laughs> you know, I don't give a fuck. I'll make money either way. Uh, let it, let it, let it go euphoric. We'll have some fun. We'll make some money. And it's, it's, it's already been there. It's written right in here. I got it in there. It's all ready to go. Okay. So what will euphoria look like? Even more bullish than this. It will look something like this. Okay. We'll just take off. And everybody's going to be telling you buy stocks. It's the easiest way to make money, blah, blah, blah. I had a nice little conversation with one of my uh, subscribers. Actually, he's kind of a co-founder of the Patreon because he's the one that turned me on to it. How insignificant does 2008, 2009 look in comparison to this, right? And he said, it, you know, kind of scares him. <laughs> and he's right. He's right to, to, to say that. I mean, it looks like 2008 2009 was nothing so you know, keep that in mind um, yeah so we broke it out in the SP um, but again you don't want to be chasing shit you want to wait it for it to correct and then start curving back up and then that would be nice for you Bitcoin lovers I haven't talked about Bitcoin in a very long time I'm still seeing the fucking thing bullish. I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? You know, I'm still looking for it to be bullish. Um, so long as it remains above this trend line. Okay. This this whole entire structure right in here is, is corrective in nature. Of course, it got a little bit ahead of itself. Correcting. And then I'm going to look for the next move up. So can it come lower? Yes, it can come all the way down to about 8,000, something like that. Maybe even break the line a little bit. Remember, I don't do support and resistance. The people that read these stupid books, oh, you know, if, if it crosses the line and support and resistance, you're wasting your time with that stuff. It's not the way it works. Anyway, you can break a little bit the line, but uh, eventually we're going to look for the next move up, okay? We're still bullish on Bitcoin. So uh, I get a lot of questions about it. But again, if there's nothing to talk about, and there hasn't been anything to talk about since, what, uh, June 2019? There's nothing to talk about. I'm, I'm not going to talk about it. All right. Um, the VIX, right, coming into complacency land. So that's kind of coiled up, right, to, to kind of maybe have another... Uh, correction and, and it, it would make perfect sense uh, to see the spike in the VIX and the price action correct from this move up, hold, and then back up again. All right. So if you start seeing the market start to come down, don't panic. Don't start saying, "Oh, that's it. Uh, we, you know, <laughs> market is going to explode. Uh, it's going to." No, it's just a correction until it breaks below previous highs. For the perma bulls that are jerking themselves off from morning till night because we're at all time highs, okay, remember, you're only up 5% since April of 2019. And you're only up 7.3% since August 2018. Okay, so for the Logan out there, my friend, you took a 23% fucking hit in December. 
your model doesn't work. Models do, uh, let me be clear about this. Economic models are bullshit. It's just some fucking idiot selling you some bullshit, okay, that, oh, yeah, I have the insight, okay, nobody else has this. I have a model, and it works, and it's worked since 1960. Does anybody in their right mind believe that in 2019 we have the same economy as we did in, two, in, in 1960 or 70 or 80 or 90 or 2000 or 2010? No. No. So don't give me about your stupid six-point models, especially when two of your indicators are worthless. One of his indicators, oh, the leading indicator. Well, if he was trading in fucking 2007, he would know that the leading indicator was not the way it is today because it was amended in 2011. And when you get these kind of amendments, they redraw the charts. So while now anybody that looks at the leading indicator, they're like, oh my God, this leading indicator is so good. Look at, look at the way it predicted the 2008 housing crisis, which was not a housing crisis. It was an accounting crisis that was created by the government. Why? Because they enacted an accounting uh, uh, where, where they said, look, you have to mark to market all your assets. Well, a lot of these markets that banks were dealing with are illiquid. Okay, this was enacted in 2006. FAS 157, you can go look at it. And when they tried to mark to market what they, they owned in e-liquid markets, the pricing is going to be fucked. Okay? That's like you trying to sell your house right now. Walk outside. First person that walks by, how much you want to buy this house for? And he tells you a dollar. Well, your house is worth a dollar. Right? So what ended up happening was that the banks were writing down trillions of fucking dollars okay, trillions of fucking dollars on their assets, and they became insolvent. So why would you lend to any other bank, right, when you don't know what their value is? You're not going to lend to them. So what, what ends up happening? Well, you get a credit freeze worldwide. It had nothing to do with housing. See, they didn't make a movie about FAS 157. They didn't write books about FAS 157. The government didn't come out and advertise FAS 157 was a problem. <laughs> but tell that to, oh, I'm an expert in housing, right? Logan, go tell that to Logan. And I've told him that, and I've tweeted it to him. I tweeted it. I've uh, Facebook messaged him I, multiple times. Man, what are you talking about? Well, you know, us experts... <laughs> What us, us, us experts? What are you talking about? Interest rates are even lower today than they were uh, in 2006, 2007. Home prices are back up. Is that a bubble? No. Was it a bubble then? Uh, yeah, to a certain extent. A little bit of a correction. Off we go. If you're going to call housing a bubble in 2007, then you got to call bonds a bubble today can't have it both ways why 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 was housing a bubble in 2007 but bonds are not a bubble today that's another thing everybody calls everything bubbles it's look you cannot model recessions can be done you can read a mosaic of economic data identify risk areas be cautious when you need to be cautious Okay, and that's it. If there's something like FAS 157 that's going to come across and sucker punch everybody and nobody knows what the hell is going on, then that's just the way it is. There's no way we're going to know about it until after the fact. Of course, they make a couple movies, you do some digging, you look around, and then you're like, oh, look, FAS 157. You see what I'm saying? You can't model that. It's not modable. <laughs> modable. You can't do it. Hey, so the leading indicator is bullshit. Then he says, oh, yeah, you know, housing housing starts are one of my six indicators, and they're so important. Really? Okay, go look at fucking 2000 and 
dot-com uh, dot com bubble. What did housing starts do? Nothing. They were going sideways. There was no indication. But you see, he diverts people's attention to what is commonly known, refers to one recession that wasn't even really housing. I'm not saying that housing was not fluffy, like bonds are fluffy and stocks are fluffy today. Um, but it doesn't make them a bubble. But anyway, uh, that ended up where housing took the rap, but really it was FAS 157. Okay, yeah, that was implementing. So, housing, crap. He would have never, if he was waiting for six points, 2000 would have never showed him a, a recession. Okay, based on housing. Leading indicator 2007, not, that wouldn't have worked either. Okay, why? Because it, it didn't in, include the amendment. I know it because I was trading then. He wasn't, right? He's an amateur. He, he didn't have a fucking clue what happened in 2007. Okay, and if he did, if he, if he was trading, he was just as dumb as anybody else, you know, that took a couple thousand dollars through in the market and, oh, well, you know, let me go to the fucking casino. Okay, so he's selling people bullshit. And as long as he keeps using these perma bears and there's a lot of them and he's right to make fun of them but because you're making fun of them does not make you right right so you guys have got to be careful when you listen to them well i didn't hear the r word you don't need a fucking r word the economy sucks <laughs> i don't need a fucking r word to tell you that okay if the economy didn't suck then they won't be pumping hundreds of billions of dollars into the market, nor would they be lowering interest rates and, and, and doing all these possible tweets and news. And yes, we're making a deal. Yes, we're doing a Brexit. No, not quite really that way. But yes, don't worry about it. We're going to fix it. We're going to sign the deal, but not really this time. But uh, you don't worry about it. And, and keep pumping fucking, you know... Uh, Stocks higher based on news events because now we're into multiple expansion. Earnings are not growing right the way they should, so the market is going up and you're just paying more money for the same earnings. Or you know, uh, maybe the er, some earnings are growing a little bit, but not enough to justify the prices. There isn't a short out there that hasn't been fucking annihilated and destroyed, okay. Um, it's a bloodbath. So what happens? You only end up with buyers. And when you end up with only buyers, then you go into euphoric and you go into multiple expansion. It's that simple. You think Buffett is stupid because he's got a $120 billion record for him on ca cash on hand? He's not stupid, right? Doesn't mean the market is going to crash, though. It doesn't mean it's going to be a recession. But you got to look at the, the caution area, right? So long as we were in this area cautious i was bearish i'll be honest with you i was bearish because the economy doesn't look the global economy is what i'm talking about yeah the u.s is doing fine right we're, relative to them we're doing fine but eventually it's going to catch up eventually it's going to catch up it's going to bite you in your ass because we are not living on an island okay we're living in a global economy so since we we don't know when the recession is going to happen, why it's going to happen. Nobody can tell you that. And if you sit here and you wait until the government tells you there's going to be a recession, you're, it's time to buy. <laughs> it's time to buy. Well, there's no R word. That's what Luggan loves to say. There's no R word. You know, fuck the R word. By the time you get the R word, you're fucked. All right. Um, well, my six point, yeah, when we go into a recession, I'm sure your six points are going to work out. But the market is going to be down, you know, 20% by the time you figure it out, brother. Believe me. Remember this move here? Huh? Did you hear an R word for 24% down in the stock market in December? Huh? Nope. Nope. Did you sit here and say, man, I fucked this one up. My model didn't show anything like this? Nope. Logan didn't say shit. But you know what? He's the first one to be like, oh, you perma bears, you're such idiots. We're up 7.36% since August of 2018. Oh, woohoo. 
What woohoo, my friend? You destroyed everybody in December. I came out. I posted it. I told you, market's going lower. You can go see it on TradingView. You can see it on my YouTube channel. I told you. Doesn't mean I was bearish, right? But I was telling you the market is going to go lower. I'm not saying that I, I caught the whole 23% down. No, I thought that was excessive. But again, I wasn't blinded to it. I wasn't surprised when it happened. So you guys know me now almost a decade, if you think about it, long-term subscribers to mind this one. I've never fucked anybody that didn't deserve to get fucked. Seriously, I mean, can I be wrong sometimes? Yeah, I haven't been yet. I haven't been yet, but I'm always aware of that. Always aware of that. But believe me, when I see bullshit, I'm going to call it out. Why am I going to call it out? Because it helps me. It helps me say, what? what is this guy saying? Huh, well, I never thought about that. Let me think about that. Oh, wait, that's bullshit. What? What is he talking about? There's no data on that. And then I come out and I tell you guys. Right, but of course, you know, people are gonna fight me on it, right? Just like I've been bullish since 2009. Okay, I was bullish, period. What do you want me to do? And then recently, I became bearish. I was proven wrong. Why? Because it went the wrong way. All right, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. Okay, nothing wrong. What's wrong about being wrong is staying wrong. So I don't stay wrong. So it broke out, it's looking, you know, bullish, wait for the correction, let it curve, and I'll take this bitch long. I don't care. I, it, 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 I'm not, I don't care about being right. Okay, I care about making money. So if it does one of these hooks, I'm in. I don't care. But again, this structure leads to the downside. So this has to break. And even if it does break, if it does one of these jobs... Uh, let me show you. It just becomes a range expansion, which is always possible. What you'll see is that you'll see this channel come up here, expand the range, and then this would become a one, two, three down. Okay. So if that if that happens and this starts to to turn, well, guess what? We're right back to bearish camp. See how that works? Right? If you if you read the charts, if you let the charts tell you what is going on, instead of you telling what the chart is going on, based on your vague hunches and feelings, you're always going to be fine. You're always going to be fine when you just let the data tell you what is going on. And don't give me some holy grail model that, oh, I've back tested it to the 1960s. Dude, you weren't even around in 2010, 11, 12, 13. I don't even know who you were then. You come around 2015, 16, and all of a sudden you're this expert. And you don't even know the LEI was was wrong in 2007. You don't even know that. Then you're talking about, oh, yeah, the housing. Look at the housing, you know. It, 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 housing starts were a clear indication of a bubble, but it wasn't a bubble. It was a FAS 157 problem. <laughs> you're a fucking clown, bro. Clown. You got no game. No game. Just because perma bulls are idiots doesn't make you right. Sorry. So, anyway, I gave you a little bit of everything. Um, Bitcoin, still bullish. Uh, gold, that that's also bullish. Uh, and I know there's a lot of uh, gold bugs out there. I've been fighting you guys forever and a day. But when something is bullish, it's bullish. It can come down a little bit more, form this structure which is a one, two, three up. Okay, so this is a corrective action. Now, if it, if it becomes elongated and it starts looking something like this, okay, obviously it's not a bull flag. Okay, this, I don't know what that kind of structure that is, right? But we're not there yet. This can come down a little bit more and still be bullish because it will be a, a bull flag. Okay, so it's testing the previous low here. It can certainly turn around next week and do this, right, easily. But we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt that it's going to break the previous low, hook, and then off it goes. Right? Kind of like Bitcoin. 
alternatively, we can be stuck in this range back and forth all the way down to the support area. And they can come as low as, I don't know, 1400, 1420, 1440, whatever it ends up being. And it will look like this. And then we'll, we'll get the upside. All right. Um, but anyway, this is naked charting. I don't expect a lot of you guys to understand this stuff. Uh, you're too busy with your RSIs, your MACDs, your support and resistance, and the candlesticks, and the hanging man. And you're wasting your time with that stuff. So if you guys really want to understand how to read a chart or understand real macroeconomics, you got to come down to patreon.com slash real macro and uh, I'll mentor you. And here's uh, patreon.com. We have a number of, uh, well, we, I have a number of uh, services um, ranging from a dollar to uh you know, seventy-five dollars for the full package. Um, come down. I think you, it's gonna, believe me, it's gonna be worth your while. Okay, to sit here and watch me because I do actual trades, and this is not a trading signal service. Okay, uh, I tell you what's going on in the market, what matters, what doesn't matter, what's likely to happen. I'm with you 24/7. Answer questions, whatever you need. Um, I'm not going to teach you the 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 candlesticks. The, that stuff, forget about it. I, I don't do that stuff. And I don't give you trading signals. If you're going to come, you're going to use a practice account because it's going to take you a while to figure out how to do this. Okay? You can't just go fight Mike Tyson because you got a hard on and you put up two, three thousand dollars and you're going to go in the ring and beat the shit out of him and become the next, you know, heavyweight champion of the world doesn't work like that so you know, for you guys that, that do these things and you, you subscribe to these stupid people that will tell you oh i'll teach you how to trade and you know i'll make you a trader and you can quit your day job and look at my ferrari if you're doing that you're you're gullible you can't do that it's not it's not going to make you money anyway that's it Thank you very much. Uh, I'll probably do another Logan video because he needs to be debunked. And I'll just go step by step and, and I'll show you this stuff. I'll be doing that in the next few days. So that's it. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Before this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many.